I'm curious this idea of how the different sort of trauma related items on TCOM tools can connect to action planning because we really have kind of two almost two buckets of trauma related items. We have our trauma experiences items, right, which are often sort of manifest as those ACEs, those adverse childhood experiences, which we sort of assign a yes or a no to has the child or, or the individual experience this yes or no. We go through that checklist and that sort of helps us identify uh, what has happened to them. But then we also have many, many items on TCOM tools that really are addressing traumatic stress, right? What is currently, how are they currently experiencing or dealing with the traumas of their life? And is that uh, requiring of our help? Is that requiring of action? And so I wonder if you can talk a little bit about the differences between those and then how each of those can speak forward to action planning. So I think when you think about action planning and with this idea of taking an individualized uh, trauma-focused approach, it's really about considering what's happening for that individual, um, for that uh, plan that you're for that plan uh, that you're working on, right? H have they experienced acute traumatic experiences that are sort of singular in nature, like a car accident, and what's the impact or response of that? Have they experienced uh, something in nature that's chronic, uh, perhaps exposure to uh, substances, right? What's the impact and response to that? And um, have they experienced things that are more complex in nature, you know, sexual assaults or, or sexual abuse? Um, so the different types of traumas can have a different impact and a different response, which then puts you in a different position in the action planning process. When we think about kind of um, how it impacts action planning, the first part is really about the lens I bring to it in that if I'm informed and aware of what you've been through, who you are, see you as a person, I then can do my best not to re-traumatize you through kind of imposing interventions on you, but also I can do my best to create interventions that kind of customize around what those sensitivities are, what those needs are specific to what you've got going on about who you are. And it's one of those things where we have to help people realize there's not always gonna be a specific direct intervention because we've checked a category on a checklist. It's more about among all the interventions that are plans that I'm trying to put in place for you, I want all of that to be responsive to who you are and all the needs that you have and all the strengths that you bring to bear as well. I think the seed of this is really connecting to individuals who feel fundamentally flawed from all the um, horrific traumatic events that have happened. And I think we all share this shared vision here and speaking that to wanting to help them choose where they, where they like to work on those difficulties in their lives. So I really think it's the approach can vary. Um, if it's a parent who has many different traumatic experiences because a, a parent's trauma is a child's greatest risk. So there may be moments where for my lens of heading toward the treatment planning process as a professional helper is to really help them connect if, you know, if they're not in tune and aware of their own trauma, then that will affect the process of helping that child if indeed they've had the same significant trauma. So I think that it's important to help them become aware of that. Awareness is a really big piece here because when you're aware, you can consciously know those different behaviors that impact um, those around you, your life events, and everything. So in compiling all those things, I think that it will be important when dealing with trauma is to sift out those salient issues and not have too many that we're focusing on at the time, but really hear them, even though if I think it's a certain path, but how do we come up with that shared vision to work on those pieces that's going to really help the matters at hand at the time? I think you're both really speaking to the idea that it depends on who you're working with uh, when it comes to action planning. But what doesn't change is your ability to understand and empathize uh, with their circumstances, uh, obviously through educating yourselves on uh, ourselves on what a trauma-informed approach is all about. At the end of the day, uh, we know that trauma experiences can interfere with healthy development, um, particularly a young person's ability to trust other folks, um, a feeling of personal safety, maybe their ability to manage emotions. And so we want to take that into account. What we do know, what we also know is 
Um, we don't work with bad children, right? Like we work with children and families that have experienced bad things. And I think it's important for us as assessors to be able to separate the two. Yeah, I think that when, when I'm thinking about um, kind of, uh, Cassandra, what you were saying about helping a parent and their awareness so that they can kind of keep an eye out about the impact of their own life on their parenting and their, their supporting their family, I think about sort of what you said about TCOM being the voice for the voiceless. I think that if we can help people understand that we're here to support you, which means not just supporting your child and what your child's diagnosis or symptoms are, not just supporting the adult in your family who might have mental health challenges or symptoms, not just supporting you as a parent who has, you know, the child protective services system involved in your life, but as a family unit, as a, as a unit of people who are kind of moving around the world together, what does it mean for all of us that we bring these experiences, both positive and negative, um, kind of to this relationship. So in this relationship, how do we help people acknowledge what they've been through, embrace what they've been through, but also then how do we use that kind of moving forward together um, with that shared vision and kind of building that team? Because we all kind of need that. We all need our squad. We all need our team. Um, and helping people understand that we, we get that as human beings as well. And in thinking about also, we think about trauma, a lot of these events are gonna be the background, the background needs, right? It happened. We can't do anything about it. If a person's been sexually abused, that's what happened. But from knowing that, how do we work with those from that, from that event and how it's impacting their lives now? And how are they going to really connect um, with what happened and say, oh, the past is the past, let's bury it. Um, <clears throat> well, you know, these are the issues and challenges we're having. Could it be because of some of these events? Cassandra, that's a great point. Um, I think about the idea, based on what you just said, I think about the, the idea um, that trauma experiences are just as natural for us as almost anything else that we can't change about ourselves. I can't change my birthday. I certainly can't change, change my trauma experiences. Your trauma experiences stay with you for a very long time, if not uh, forever. I can't remember what I got for my fifth birthday, but I can remember uh, domestic violence in my home, right? Those are things that stay with you. So wouldn't it be a great idea to work with people from a systems perspective that gets that stuff, right? Individuals that understand the potential impact of my experiences uh, and how I might respond to those experiences and how they might best allow the system to help me navigate those experiences. Nice, I love that, that's good.